your your book deals heavily with Abraham Lincoln and with what is called euphemistically now the Civil War, the war between the states. I think you and I agree that it probably was an international war, that it was fomented internationally, financed most certainly out of Europe, and was part of a scheme designed to lay to waste the American experiment, which would have been a huge threat to the European power and money interests. Here, let me, let me give you a quote from German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck discussing that entire period uh, of American history. He says that the division of the United States into federations of equal force was decided long before the Civil War by the high financial powers of Europe. These bankers were afraid that the United States, if they remained in one block and as one nation, would attain economic and financial independence, which would in turn upset their, their financial dominion over Europe and the world. Of course, in the inner circle of finance, the voice of the Rothschilds prevailed. They saw an opportunity for prodigious booty if they could substitute two feeble democracies burdened with debt to the financiers in place of a vigorous republic sufficient unto herself. Therefore, they sent their emissaries into the field to exploit the question of slavery and to drive a wedge between the two parts of the Union. The rupture between the North and South became inevitable. The masters of European finance employed all their forces to bring it about and to turn it to their advantage. And Abraham Lincoln realized this. He knew that the Rothschilds, who hold the official title of Guardian of the Vatican Treasury, by the way, that's kind of the linkage to the Vatican there, he stated the money power meaning the Rothschilds and the Jesuits, preys upon the nation in times of peace and conspires against it in times of adversity. It is more despotic than monarchy, more insolvent than autocracy, more selfish than bureaucracy. I see in the near future a crisis approaching that unnerves me and causes me to tremble for the safety of my country. Corporations have been enthroned. An era of corruption will follow, and the money power of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until the wealth is aggregated in the hands of a few people and the republic is destroyed. That is exactly the situation you have right now. Yeah, it's completely uh, prophetic. Yeah, totally. And you, let's go back now, and maybe you can help me pull some threads together. So we have the monarchical power, the, the, in, in Europe, we have the Rothschilds, who are the bankers to the Pope and also the bankers to the Crown of England. Is that not correct? Right. And bankers to the United States. Because you've got to remember that the, the U.S. banking system, as it stands right now, is nothing more than an arm of the Bank of England. It's a branch off. Power goes... Your taxes ultimately go to the Vatican if you really want to get down to... Mm -hmm. down to the brass tax, right? Uh, the, the IRS collects on behalf of Federal Reserve System. They take that money, ship it across the Atlantic to England. England then ships it to the Vatican, right? And that's how the you know the, the Vatican uh, is turns around and is able to buy up this, that, and everything else. All these you know land holdings and real the real estate, the businesses, you know they're into all kinds of booze, right? You go into a liquor store and you buy Benedictine. What do you? Think? <laughs> I mean, exactly. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, so the all these enterprises and the, you know uh, and then you have these orders like like the Jesuits that take a lot of that money and become majority shareholders in the Bank of America and you know other other banks and 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 uh, so that's kind of how all that that whole circle kind of goes right